Hi, this is Eric Marmon, Board Game Geek News, here looking at Gentleman Thieves, published by Bombix and distributed by Asmodee. And the game is designed by Dumas Chevalier de Palamans, the team that designed Intrigo. In this game, the characters take the role of Arsène Lupin and a band of thieves who are trying to rob as much loot as possible, with the richest thief at the end of the game wins. How we set things up, we open the box, it's got this tray and then an attached game board that you use during the play. These are the five thieves that the characters will take their roles of. Uh, the game plays from two to five thieves, so if there are only two or three players or four, then there's going to be some thieves who are not claimed. Each player gets one of these roll cards at the start of the game, and you keep that secret until the end of the game. This is me, yellow guy. Okay. Each round, there are going to be two alliances that are formed. If I can get the alliance tokens. Okay, there's five alliance tokens. The player who starts the round is the matchmaker. All right, matchmaker, matchmaker. What they do is they place two of the tokens in the left-hand compartment, three in the right. Those are the teams for that round. Okay, players are then going to be drafting thief tokens or equipment tokens. There are five types of equipment tokens and they come in five colors. The colors are the thieves. And what do we do with those tokens? These are the five locations from which the players will try to rob during the course of the game. Each location starts primed with two equipment tokens. Again, with the tokens coming in five colors and five types of equipment. Uh, stethoscopes, you can hear the tumblers and a mask so no one knows who you are. Gloves, no fingerprints, and so on. The game board has space for three tokens, and it has the other tokens in the rack here. On a turn, a player takes one of the face-up tokens or mystery token and places it by one of the locations. What you're trying to do, well, what you're trying to do is get the most, most loot. Um, but a location is robbed when there are five different types of tokens next to it. You can have up to three tokens of each type next to it. Okay, each time you draw a token, you replace it from the box. Uh, we've got a stethoscope here again. Now we need a pick. Oh, someone's got a pick. Okay, as soon as there are five types of tokens here, we rob this. What we do is you divide the tokens into groups. Okay, this alliance has one token. This alliance has six. Clearly this alliance did the job. Each member of that alliance gets two, uh, they split the loot evenly, put it on the board here, you throw the other one away. The matchmaker token passes to the player who has the to the left of the one who currently has it. That player makes a new alliance by moving at least two tokens. You prime this location again, and then the round continues from the left of the player who had the matchmaker token. So, no one knows who scored, except of course the players who placed tokens there that made that alliance score. So you need to deduce who people are. The alliance here is kind of tricky because of course, if you are in this group with only two, you have a much lower chance of scoring anything because you have only two-fifths of the tokens, right? Except that whoever is the matchmaker is going to ideally make matches that are going to benefit him or her. So, that's the course of the game. The game ends as soon as the Brigadier token is drawn from the stack, and that is placed in the shuffled into the final six tokens. There's a little bit more going with the game. Each player has two to four helping hand tokens, depending on the number of players. You can spin a helping hand token to take a special action, such as uh, placing a tunnel tile on, under a location. The manor already starts with a tunnel. What you're doing is now tunneling from your manor to another location. You combine the tokens that are next to these locations. If there are all five types among them, then both locations are stolen from simultaneously and then the tunnel collapses as you try to hide your tracks, uh, moving from one location to another, as you wish. There is also a lock token, which is on the museum. Okay, the museum cannot be stolen from as long as the lock is here. You can still place tiles, so you just cannot steal anything. However, you can spin the helping hand token, move the lock to another location, boom! If the museum is ready to be stolen from, it is stolen from. The bank starts with some additional loot tiles, and these are added into the loot if the bank is stolen from, and there are additional replacement tiles just to juice the bank up a little bit more, make it nice to look at. Finally, you can spend a helping hand token to place a car next to a location. What that does is remove a token and drives it over to the place with the lock.
Okay, you're priming this one for a later haul. You're possibly keeping this one from scoring when it is disadvantageous to you. And that's Gentleman Thieves, which plays in about 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, the player count varies again from two to five, with of course the usual things happening in, in games that have hidden roles. Whereas if you have only two players, you have a lot of opportunity for bluffing, misdirection, and in terms of who's scoring what. With five players, you just gotta get out there and grab that when you can, uh, because the game will hustle right along and you'll probably lose. Because of course there's five people. That's what's gonna happen. You though can be the gentleman thief or the gentle lady thief, gentle person thief. You can be a thief.